Welcome to another episode of Raising OKC Kids, Conversations with Metro Family in Oklahoma City. I'm Kirsten Holder, and today we're talking with Chip Carter, President and CEO of Christo Ray Oklahoma City Catholic High School, a private college preparatory high school for families of limited economic means. Chip, I'm so glad you're here talking with us today. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on Raising OKC Kids podcast, and enjoy being with you, Kirsten. Yes, we're so glad. So this is the fourth year that Christo Ray has been open for school. There are currently 270 students enrolled in grades 9 to 12. It definitely seems like growth is something laid into the foundation of this school from challenging students either above or below their grade level to offering personal weekly coaching calls to teachers at your school. Um, I just love the entire attitude of growth. Um, that this that this school portrays. Is that what drew you to this position when you joined in 2019? Well, it is. It's a, uh, um, I do not have an education background. I, I worked in, in politics and government and, and public relations and real estate. Um, but I just really felt called to uh, the school when I learned about it. And I, um, several years ago, I went to a, a reception like we're oftentimes invited to. And I, um, as they explain the school, um, how we help educate families of limited economic means and provide them a, a private uh, college prep uh, education um, and where they work five days a month to help put themselves through school, it just, it just really hit a chord with me. And it was something that um, I felt drawn to. And, and the more I've worked in it uh, these past two years, got to know the students, uh, got to know our board and, and all of our donors. Uh, it's just been the best decision of my life uh, and, and love what we're doing. And we are, as you said, we are growing. We are building a brand new high school for the Oklahoma City community. And um, that's an exciting and powerful endeavor. Um, I'm seeing how we're changing our students' lives. And as you said, we've got about 270 students. When you, when you start impacting their lives and their families, then you're, you're impacting your community. So it's pretty, pretty powerful. Absolutely. And your passion is shining through. I love talking to people that are passionate about the positions you're in. I'd love to hear more about something you mentioned, um, students working while they're enrolled. Um, and you do have corporate work study programs for students. It looks like from your website, several companies are listed as partners. Companies such as Bolt Construction, Chesapeake, and Integris, to name a few. Can you tell us a little bit more about how these work study program works? Sure. So, so real quick, when we were founded back in Chicago 25 years ago, we were one of 38 schools across the country that are Crystal Ray schools. The whole idea was how do you provide college prep education for families of limited means? Fundraising can get you about halfway there. How do you do the other half? And they came across the idea of having our students work and work in real um, professional office environments. And so we call it corporate work study. And uh, each of our students works at uh, one of about 75 companies around the metro. Uh, four students uh, are one full-time equivalent employee for the company. So you have a, a Monday worker, a Tuesday worker, a Wednesday, a Thursday, and then they each work one Friday a month. So four students share a job. And uh, it, it not only allows them to pay for their education, but they're gaining insight into the workforce and careers that, that no other student would get. Um, and most of our families um, uh, are, are, do not have college degrees. Only about one in 10 of our students has a college educated adult in their home. So these are first generation college bank kids. So being able to, to regularly be in a work environment, banks, law firms, hospitals, accounting firms, manufacturing companies, um, and see that gives them a great connection to their classes and really feeds that desire to go on to college and get that degree so they too can have a job like their boss at Integris Hospital or Bolt or, or whatever. I, uh, you can go on our website, but you know, here is a list of the various Oklahoma City companies we have. Uh, some of the best and, and most uh, prominent companies in the metro um, hire our students, high school students to work. 
That's very encouraging to hear too, that community leaders are wanting to build back into their community and into the, the future of our city. Um, and it looks like that is a huge long list that you just held up. Yeah. Why is this program such an important pillar of the school? Um, and what types of work experience do students gain? What type of benefits do you see? Um, what, what's kind of the outcome of, of the whole program? Sure, you, you know, the original intent was really just to help financially have the school work, but it's so much more than that. Um, the confidence our students get um, to be able to go into that bank, that law firm, um, sit with you know, Mrs. Jones, their supervisor, build that relationship with other professionals around the office. Um, it's just tremendous. We see every one of our students, kind of that light bulb will go off at some point and they go, wait, I can do that. That could be me. And, and you know, I, I jokingly say that teachers have struggled for centuries and how to connect algebra to the real world, right? Um, you know, every student has said, why do I need to learn this? When you are working in a, a real professional environment, so many times what happens in the classroom has a new and stronger connection to what you're seeing in your job. And so um, our students do typically a, a fairly clerical or, or administrative assistant type work, filing, data entry, shredding, uh, phone work, um, things of that nature. But we also have great stories all the time of where our students, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and this year we'll have our first senior class, saying to their supervisor, hey, have we thought about doing it this way? Or what if I tried this? Would that be okay? And, and the supervisors say, gosh, that, that's a great idea. Super quick story. You know, this past year at Chesapeake, a large project that our team at Chesapeake was working on, a student said to a supervisor, well, what if we ran this through Python and had it search 30 characters to the right and left of the legal description and then pulled the records that hit on that? Would that be okay? Well, the, the supervisor went to IT and said, does this make sense? And IT said, that's a great idea. <laughs> Chesapeake told us that it saved them $30,000 in man hours to manually find something that our student, a high school sophomore, suggested to them. And so, you know, the, what do you think? How do you think that student now feels with that story, knowing that he made a real substantial contribution to a major company here in town? Absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah, that's well, great. And it's hard, you know, to uh, speak up when you think you have an idea, especially when it's your supervisor, it's an authority period, it's an authority figure. And so they're not only building those critical thinking skills that are very hard to teach in the classroom, but they're also gaining that confidence, like you mentioned, knowing that their, their voice, their education, their opinion is worthy of that, of worthy of being heard and their ideas can grow beyond them. That's a very rewarding feeling. Yeah, that's something we really stress with our students is that don't can't discount yourself just because you're a student. You're a part of this company's team and they need to hear from you. And if, if you don't understand something, ask or if you have an idea, let them let them hear it. So. I love that. That ownership is so critical. That is just awesome. Yeah. So Crystal Ray is the only school in Oklahoma that offers award-winning entrepreneurship courses through the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, which is NFTE. Can you tell us more about this program as well? Sure. Um, since the corporate work study program is such a, uh, a part of our school, I mean, it's we consider ourselves you know, half an employment agency, half a college prep high school, trying to give our students the entrepreneurial thinking, entrepreneurial skills that answer the questions of why does the company do this? What problem are they trying to address? Um, how did they bring their idea to market or, or you know, how did they promote themselves, market themselves? So all the, um, we wanted to use what's called Nifty to help give our students that the background for business. Um, we have a great competition um, within the, the national network where it's kind of like a combination of Shark Tank and a science fair where our students come up with their own business ideas. Uh, they work on it all year long. And then we bring in uh, CEOs and C-suite executives from across the city and they judge their, their ideas. And um, 
it's great to have you know, two or three students on a team working on a, a new website or a new app or, or a marketing idea and then have real local executives listen to them and give feedback and kind of grade them on that. Um, again, it helps empower them and it helps them see that, that, that the world is their oyster, that they can become uh, what they dream. Um, I'm pretty proud one of our students uh, last year that won our local competition is competing nationally in the regional competition with NIFT and, and we're, we're pulling for her and, and hoping that she uh, can make it all the way to the finals. So. That is awesome. Very, very cool. It sounds like you have a lot of success oriented students at your school. Yeah, we do. It's certainly something we focus on. Yes. Well, and I just love, um, you mentioned, you know, if, if you don't see it modeled, you probably don't think it's a path for you. And right. then not only are you showing that, you're giving opportunities for practice within a safe environment before they get kind of thrown out into, okay, figure it out yourself. These, sure. these are really great life skills and, and practice points that you're kind of building into their curriculum. Sure. And it's, it's hard to dream for something that you haven't seen. And so, a lot of our families are, are coming from a background that they haven't been exposed to some things. So part of what we really do is expose our students to, to that business and professional world. Absolutely. The connections made, I'm sure, the relationships, that, that's outstanding. Yeah. yeah. There are some other unique ways Cristo Ray serves your students. I saw that you've got an esports program, um, a meditation club, mariachi. There, these are certainly some opportunities that you don't get at more of a mainstream high school. Sure. Well, you know, we're, we're a different high school because our students working five days a month. Um, but we're also a perfectly normal high school in that we have sports and, and clubs and all kinds of activities. Um, cross country, volleyball, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls soccer, rowing. Um, so we have just about every sport except um, uh, football and baseball are the only two that we, we don't offer. Um, very active student council, um, active clubs like uh, Royals for Life. Uh, we have a peer uh, ministry and a peer tutoring program that our students help other students um, in um, a chess club. Um, uh, as you said, Mariachi and Ballet Folkloro are very big programs here. Um, so, and, and we see those, you know, our school is, is predominantly Hispanic in background. But the beautiful thing about both of those programs is I have kids of all backgrounds and ethnicities participating in those because they see it as a school activity, not just something for somebody else. And so it's, yeah. it's a very inclusive environment. Um, and since we're a new school, we really encourage our kids. Um, if there's a, a club that doesn't exist that you think should, go start it. Um, we're in our fourth year, so we're building traditions. We're building um, a lot of a lot of the apparatus of a high school, and so I think a lot of our students think that's kind of fun that they get to be a trailblazer and create. So, um, so that's one of the that's one of the pros of starting a new school. That's awesome. Well, and it's another practice point. I mean, we're talking about entrepreneurialism, and then you're giving them the space to practice that, which is that's so helpful. Um, in theory, you can talk about it all day, but when you actually have to do the work to create a new program, you learn all the pros and cons that go along with sure. it. Sure. We really stress to our students that, that your life is, is, you're in control of your life. And so uh, if you want something, you need to speak up and advocate for yourself. And last year, we had several students want to know why we didn't have a ping pong club. And we said, push two tables together. Here's a net. And, and ping pong club was born. So. There you go. I love it. <laughs> um, your students' mental health, as, as all of our mental health, is very important. How do you, how do your social emotional counselors provide unique support to your students? Um, and do you have new or different practices or challenges that have come up since the pandemic began? Well, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I think one of the real special and good things that, that uh, Chris Ray offers, I'm very proud about it, is we have a dedicated social and emotional counselor for our students. Um, um, she is busy sun up to sundown and um, very active with our students. All students will, will see the counselor a couple times a year just for a check-in. Um, and so um, she's able to um, really identify and work with students who may have some issues happening in their personal life, in their homes. Um, you know, every teenager 
has a, has a difficult time. It's tough to be a teenager in America today. Um, so, so to have that support, to have that extra help for them, to help them understand um, that it's okay to, to feel bad. It's okay to have, to be sad or have emotions. Sometimes students just don't know how to, how to address that or how to, how to respond with that. So we're really in, 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 intentionally engaged to work with them, um, help identify healthy strategies uh, for how to deal with these things how to create good routines. Um, you know, if, you, if you go to bed early, if you eat a good meal, if you, if you have a very uh, regimented um, lifestyle, you're much more likely to have downtime and to be able to decompress and, um, and better manage some of the challenges of being a teenager. So we're, uh, it's, a good, it's a good part of our school. And certainly uh, in the pandemic, um, I think it's been an absolute lifeline for so many of our kids when we were virtual um, uh, throughout the, the uh, spring of, of uh, spring of 20 and in the fall of, uh, of 20, um, that was a lifeline kind of to the school to have her, even if it was like this through, through Zoom, uh, but to be able to have somebody you could talk to. Yes, I think that's important for us all. But like you said, it's so hard to be a teenager. Yeah. It always has been, but I think the pressure on teenagers is even higher in this day and age. They're digital natives, um, which can come with a lot of pros in the working world, but a lot of cons while you're still an adolescent. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, we are social beings and um, isolation doesn't, doesn't suit us well. And I certainly yeah. don't think it suits teenagers well. Yes, yes, especially teenagers. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So how are your students, teachers and staff feeling 18 months into this pandemic? I mean, I think I've got a pretty good idea because I, you know, it's just hard to not know what's going on, but um, what kinds of support do they and other high school students need specific to experiences of living in a pandemic? We talked about counseling, but what sure. are some other needs that they might have? Well, the, the counseling has been a big part and has been very active. Um, you know, students, um, teenagers in general, and I think perhaps ours in particular, are so resilient. Um, um, our our, our um, uh, value last year was fortitude, which was extremely appropriate given the time we're living through. And, um, and our students showed a lot of fortitude, a lot of courage and strength. Um, it's been hard on all of us. And so I think it's helpful um, if, if we all just acknowledge that. It's uh, students, uh, faculty, staff, we've all uh, talked about, we're living through an unprecedented time. Uh, you know, I met with our students in the spring of, right when the pandemic was beginning and said, it's not that the adults you're around are trying to hide something from you or, or keep you in the dark. We've never been through this before ourselves. Uh, we as a nation, as a world, um, uh, it's been a hundred years since the last pandemic, so this is this is a challenging time. And um, so I think if you're if you're honest with your students in the school and you're honest with yourself and candid, I think they respect that. And I think that has helped us um, do as good as as, as any school. Um, we were uh, virtual for our first semester last year, uh, but we came back in second semester and have been in person uh, since. Um, you know, a month ago, I think I thought that this fall was going to be perfectly normal. Mm. I think most of us thought we were, you know, right. the worst was behind us. Mm -hmm. And um, in July, we started to see the Delta variant grow. And um, so we made added um, um, adjustments here. We are, we are still in person, uh, but we are masked um, uh, here in the school. And um, um, we're encouraging all of our students to be vaccinated, and students, faculty, staff. Uh, it's not mandatory, but we're highly encouraging that, and uh, we're providing vaccine clinics. And um, so, anyway, we're 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 trying to be as proactive as you can, and and again, provide as much normalcy as our students can have, because that's what they deserve. And uh, but but we take care of them. Um, their physical health as well as their mental well-being is foremost in our mind. Yes, thank you for saying that. Well, and you're so right that. <laughs> I think anybody, but teenagers especially, can sniff out inauthenticity from a mile away. So just oh. leveling with them <laughs> and saying, we, we don't know, and we're trying to figure this out as you are, I think that is the right way to go. Yeah, yeah, that's what we've tried. 
<laughs> so last question. If I am interested in um, my child going to Christopher Ray, how do I start the process of enrollment, even if I'm unsure whether or not it's realistic or whether or not I can afford it? Sure, sure, sure. Well, uh, first of all, everything about um, our enrollment and the uh, uh, admissions process is on our website. Um, we have an admissions tab, and so I would encourage all of your viewers uh, to go to Christo Ray, C-R-I-S-T-O-R-E-Y-O-K-C.org, Christo Ray, OKC.org, um, and look at our, our website, and you can see um, all the information there. Um, as I said in the beginning, you know, we are a school for family of limited means, and so uh, we publish on the website uh, kind of the ceiling for um, your household income. So we maintain our mission to, to educate those that otherwise wouldn't have had uh, another opportunity. Uh, but all that is on the, the website, uh, or you can always contact our admissions team, um, uh, Lauren or Mia, uh, by calling the school at 405-945-9100. Uh, so either the website or phone number call, we'd be more than happy to, to visit with anybody um, that would like to explore more about Crystal Ray. Great. And for those of you listening, we will put that information in the show notes. Um, so don't feel like you've got to scribble it down right now. You go back and look at our show notes and find all the information on contacting Crystal Ray for your family. Um, I so appreciate you taking a moment today to speak with us, Chip. We have enjoyed hearing more about Cristo Ray, the environment of growth and entrepreneurialism and critical thinking and support that this school provides to especially students, but it sounds like teachers and their families as well. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Really a pleasure to be on with you, uh, Kirsten, and, and uh, a great opportunity to visit with you. Absolutely. And like we said, for more information about the school, um, admissions, or any other programs, visit www.cristorayokc.org. Thanks and join us next time on Raising OKC Kids. Thank you so much.